Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so in this video, you are going to have a comprehensive over, overview about the hemoglobin, right? What, what are the reactions? What is the structure? And trust me, you will have a lot of clarity once you study this particular, once you go through this video, because I'll be also talking about the applications of the various things that happen to hemoglobin in this particular video, right? If you want to practice questions related to bio inorganic chemistry, then you can follow me on Unacademy. I've given the link below down in the description box. You can click there and follow me for videos or questions on bio organic chemistry now uh, hemoglobin it has two names one is basically called in british english and one in the american english so hemoglobin i'll follow this one the american english one so this is easier to spell out hemoglobin all right now uh, it is consisting of two terms one is heme which means heme is a basically a group about which i'm going to talk about it's a really important group when it comes to bio in organic chemistry and the other part is globin globin means any protein right globin is a protein part and heme means uh, I'm going to discuss what a heme is, right? So this is a porphyrin ring. So every heme group consists of a porphyrin ring, ring, okay? And what is a porphyrin ring? Basically, there are four pyrrole groups, and these four pyrrole pyrrole groups are basically at a, um, uh, these. Uh, these four pyrrole groups are attached by a methane bridge methane bridge all right so this is your porphyrin structure this is the basic porphyrin structure now once a iron atom is coordinated in this porphyrin structure once there's an iron atom which is coordinated in this por in porphyrin so this is the atom uh, this is the iron center which is coordinated in this porphyrin so once a iron Co gets, gets coordinated to this porphyrin ring it's called a heme group so this together is called the heme group basically a porphyrin group which is coordinated to an iron is called a heme group so this is our heme group right so a hemoglobin as the name suggests can consist of a heme group but it is not always so like hemocyanin if i talk about i'll talk about later in the video or maybe in the next video about hemocyanin so in case of hemocyanin it also the name also suggests it has a heme group but hemocyanin does not have a heme group because it has a copper it's a copper protein right it's not an iron protein so don't go by the name hemoglobin consists of a heme group now what is the basic structure of um, hemoglobin right so uh, there are two forms of hemoglobin one is a d oxyform and one is the oxyform so d oxyform like the name suggests it does, it does not have oxygen bind like ox oxygen is not bound to it and in the oxyform the oxygen is bound to it so this is the d oxyform so this over here is the d oxyform of hemoglobin this is the d oxyform or d oxy hemoglobin it's sometimes referred to as so in this deoxyhemoglobin we have these four nitrogens of the porphyrin ring and then we have a amino acid attached one of the amino acids attached that is a histidine nitrogen of the histidine histidine is an amino acid so the nitrogen of that histidine is attached to our iron so this iron is penta coordinated when it's deoxygenated when it's deoxygenated it's penta coordinated and it's in plus two oxidation state so this iron in deoxy form i'll write down over here the iron in deoxy form is in plus two oxidation state so it is basically fe plus two that is ferrous fe2 fe2 plus is ferrous ion so it's in ferrous ion form and this is high spin all right it's a high spin complex so in deoxy form it's in high spin it's a high spin complex all right now what happens is uh, once it binds to the oxygen once this uh, iron binds to the oxygen it comes into the oxygenated form or oxyhemoglobin so once it forms the oxyhemoglobin so once it forms the oxyhemoglobin it is still in plus 2 oxidation state but now it's low spin now it's low spin okay now there's one important concept you have to understand here which is cooperative effect you might have heard of cooperative effect which is associated with hemoglobin so what exactly is this cooperative effect now what happens is once the high spin iron changes to low spin something happens something happens to the whole complex and we'll talk about that so hemoglobin is a tetramer tetra means tetramer means it consists of four different kinds of peptide chains it consists of four different peptide chains okay so that's why it's called a tetramer now what happens is uh, in the deoxy form this porphyrin ring that you can see over here this is in same plane so all these four nitrogens are in one plane okay all these four nitrogens are in one plane but what happens is um, uh, okay so i'll rub this structure off so that I, I can give you some more clarity 
okay so basically what happens is you can see that all the four nitrogens these four nitrogens are in one plane they all are in one plane that is they are lying in the same plane but this iron in its high spin iron in high spin state is a little bulky in size okay it's a little bigger in size because it's bigger in size it is not able to fit inside the cavity of the porphyrin ring so it is not able to fit inside the cavity made by the porphyrin ring because iron in plus 2 oxidation state a uh, high spin iron in plus 2 oxidation oxidation state is pretty big all right so what it does is it is lit it's lying over the porphyrin ring so this, imagine this is your porphyrin ring and the iron is in the center only but it's not inside the cavity of the porphyrin ring it's not lying in the plane of the nitrogen atoms it's lying above the plane of the nitrogen atoms and this distance of uh, iron from the uh, cavity of the porphyrin rings or from the plane of nitrogen is 40 picometers now why is this again i repeat because the radius of a, a high spin iron plus 2 is quite big so that is why it's lying in the uh, it's lying in above the plane but what happens is that once the oxygen bounds to it binds to it once the oxygen binds to it so this this uh, oxygen when it binds to it, it it leads to the formation of the low spin state and this low spin state is much smaller in radius as compared to the high spin state so this iron now lowers it lowers its position all right this iron now it also has a histidine group attached to it so this iron now which was in high spin state now lowers its position because now the smaller now the size has become small once it's bound to oxygen so its size has become small and what happens it comes near the porphyrin ring it comes near the cavity of the nitrogen atoms it still does not fit into the cavity it's still lying above the cavity but comparative to the deoxy form in the oxy form the iron is now near the cavity once this iron lowers down this this histidine is attached to a further different amino acids which are then attached to different other different chains of amino acids and that's how all the all the four chains of the hemoglobin are connected to one another so as this iron lowers down towards the porphyrin ring there's a change in the conformation of this nitrogen of the histidine this nitrogen this histidine conformation changes because of which all the other amino acids change have a change in the conformation and because of this change in conformation it leads to uh, more binding of oxygen first oxygen molecule that binds to the iron it leads to a conformation change which leads to further binding of other oxygen atoms on the other chains all right and this effect is known as cooperative effect now what is the significance of cooperative effect so the first oxygen that binds to iron is, is the the let's say the rate of the rate of the oxygen binding to the iron is very very less but once the second is bound it becomes even faster once the third is bound it is even faster and the fourth oxygen that binds to the iron so that i told you that it's a tetramer so there are four different chains so once the uh, the fourth chain also binds to the oxygen the rate of the uh, rate of binding of oxygen of the fourth chain is 300 times faster than the first chain all right so the bound the fourth chain of uh, iron or the fourth chain of hemoglobin binds to oxygen 300 times faster okay it binds 300 times faster and this is a very important criteria you can be asked in the exam that that um, which one of the uh, oxygen will bind faster the first one the second one the third one or the fourth one so the answer would be fourth one and the same is also true for the reverse so if the if all if all the, if hemoglobin is existing in oxy form and one of the chains loses oxygen then again there's a conformational change and all of the oxygens all of the chains uh, start losing oxygen at a rapid rate and the last one will lose oxygen the fastest so this is known as cooperative effect all right now the next thing why we need to discuss is the is the r and t state or the relaxed state and the tense state now what i mean by the relaxed and tense state so let's look into that one more thing i needed to discuss was that um, fe is existing in let's say uh, fe2 plus and this is the uh, oxygen molecule that is attached to it but you all of you know oxygen is quite electronegative in nature so what it does is it it, it exists in a resonating structure basically it, uh, first of all it binds in fe2 plus form but it is in resonating structure that is it can go to fe3 plus also and lead to the formation of your superoxide anion so this is your super oxide super oxide o2 minus right so it can lead to the formation of superoxide anion because oxygen is electronegative so it would like to have negative charge so this is the resonating structure 
right so in some books like hui you will see they have only mentioned fe2 plus state in some books like housecraft they have only mentioned fe3 plus state but it's actually in resonance right and one important thing that i need to uh, one important concept that i need, need to teach is distal distal histidine and proximal histidine so, so what is your proximal and distal histidine so in proximal histidine what happens is this histidine histidine which is attached to the iron this is called proximal histidine right the histidine which is attached to the iron is called proximal histidine and what is a distal histidine uh, distal histidine is the one which will bind to this o minus so this o minus is actually very unstable so it cannot exist as such this form of um, iron this form of uh, oxyhemoglobin cannot exist as such because this negative charge needs to be st stabilized so what happens is again the the imidazole group so this nitrogen or the histidine has a imidazole group so this imidazole group is only attached to the iron similarly there's a the imidazole group of the histidine also uh, stabilizes this o minus by hydrogen bonding and that histidine is called a, as a distal histidine and this one over here is called proximal histidine so this is the concept of proximal and distal distal is uh, stabilizing the uh, superoxide this still stabilizing the superoxide and proximal binds to the iron in porphyrin all right so this is the importance of distal and proximal histidine all right uh, okay so the next thing that we need to discuss is your i um, r and t state so what is the r and t state so r is a relaxed state okay r is called the relaxed state and t is called the tense or taut state t is called the tensed or taut state okay so r is your relaxed state and t is called your taut or tense state so what is the difference in relaxed state relaxed state is when oxygen is bound to the iron when oxygen is bound to iron it's called or, or in the oxy form it's in relaxed state and in deoxy form it's in tense, tense state in deoxy form it's in tense state so what exactly is tense in relaxed basically what happens is when the iron is uh, bigger in size when iron is in high spin state okay when fe is in high, high spin state what happens is it's lying above the porphyrin ring so there's a lot of constraint in the ring in the whole heme group there's a lot of constraint in the whole hemoglobin and what happens is once oxygen binds the radius of iron atom it decreases because it enters the low spin state and because of this decrease in the radius what now what happens is uh, steric repulsions between the porphyrin and the iron it relaxes because because of reduction in size of the iron and now what happens is it enters a relaxed state so whenever whenever iron in the oxy form is there uh, whenever there is an oxy form of hemoglobin it will be in relaxed state and when, whenever there is a deoxy form it is in tense state right so this is the relaxed and tense state concept now this relaxed and tense state can vary with ph as well so if i vary the ph okay if i vary the ph it can uh, lead to the uh, either the r state or the t state it can favor either r state or t state now what kind of ph will favor the r state so a low ph favors tense state okay a low ph favors the tense state and a high ph favors the r state or the oxy state you can call it as oxy state and you can call this deoxy state okay now what is the application of this concept you might be wondering that i was talking that i'll tell you the application so what is the application of this concept now the application is that um, in high ph i told you it's favoring oxy form that is at higher ph uh, values the oxygen is binding to the um, uh, the oxygen is binding to the hemoglobin forming the oxy form but in at a lower ph what is happening is it it is leading to release of oxygen basically oxygen will not bind it will lead to re release of oxygen because if oxygen gets released it will go back to the tense state now the physical significance or the application of this part is that when you are running or when you are doing a lot of physical activity what happens your um, lactic acid buildup takes place and once the acid buildup takes takes place the ph of your blood or your tissue decreases the ph of your blood or tissue decreases and as the as the ph decreases the hemoglobin starts re releasing the oxygen because it would like to go to the tense state and if it likes to go to the tense state that means it will release oxygen and to provide oxygen to your tissues to your cells right and that is why this part concept is important that's why when you're running or when you are uh, doing some kind of physical activity that's why lactic acid builds up because it will promote release of oxygen by uh, conversion of oxy form of hemoglo hemoglobin to t form or the r form of hemoglobin to, to the t form
right so this is the physical this is the application of this whole concept one thing that i wanted to want to discuss which is again very important from entrance exam point of view and that is iron or ferric iron fe3 plus fe3 plus ferric iron will never bind to oxygen okay this is a known fact that your iron in 3 plus oxidation state will never bind to oxygen it will only bind to oxygen in 2 plus state now what happens is um, in your body you have uh, obviously it's it's all water right so water can oxidize this iron 3 plus water can oxidize the iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus in presence of water it can oxidize this iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus now to prevent this we have the globin chain because the globin chain is potentially hydrophobic so it will not you know allow water to come near iron and it will not uh, allow the iron to oxidize from plus 2 to plus 3 right so this is a very important part of the globin chain what is the importance of globin chain it does not allow water to come near the iron so but otherwise or iron will oxidize fe2 plus to fe3 plus and will lead to uh, inactivation of your hemoglobin because in 3 plus oxidation state oxygen cannot bind to iron right but uh, still 3 to 4 percent of your hemo iron in the body in the form of hemoglobin gets oxidized to fe3 plus and that form when iron gets oxidized to fe3 plus of a hemoglobin it's called as a globin methemoglobin right so iron in 3 plus of oxyglo of uh, hemoglobin is called methemoglobin now there's an enzyme in your body which is called methemoglobin reductase and what it does it reduces fe3 plus back to fe2 plus so what does this enzyme do it is methemoglobin from 3 plus to 2 plus some individuals there's a problem that they have a uh, low level of methemoglobin reductase in the body and if they have low level of methemoglobin your uh, reductase your methemoglobin starts forming a lot because uh, because since the um, enzyme that reduces 3 plus to 2 plus is in less amount so it starts to build up methemoglobin starts to build up and leads to a very terrible disease right so this is again a significance of bio and organic chemistry medical terms so i hope you found this video helpful and um, in the coming videos i'll also be talking about myoglobin hemocyanin hemerythrin and all of these bio inorganic structures right